Hi everybody. Most pilots know how tire pressure affects an airplane's performance and other factors, but many of us do not get a chance to see what it looks like. Let's go fly some planes and take a look at how our wheels behave on landing. I collected footage from a number of landings in my Cessna 170 with 800-6 tires inflated to 35 psi. This is about 10 psi over book recommendations for this size of tire on this particular plane but it is in line with what's acceptable for six ply tires from our tire manufacturer. I made my approaches at idle power, full flap, and usually with about eight to 15 knots of crosswind in the direction of the camera. Holding a level touchdown attitude, contact with the ground is consistently made around 65 miles per hour indicated. You'll see there's not much give to the overinflated tire. This means the spring steel landing gear of the plane is, well, springing and there's not much damping to be had. On turf, you'll notice the overinflated tires, as various shocks get sent into the landing gear, are bounced back through the tire and into the ground. The result is a pretty bumpy, herky-jerky type of rollout, as the uh, wheels hop over the tufts. With overinflated tires, our landing gear behaves a lot like this vibrating ruler. Our overinflated tires are stiff, they bounce around, and they do little to dampen out this vibration. So every crack in the concrete we cross makes the landing gear get all springy again. The stiff tire deforms less than normal, and that means the weight of the plane is focused onto a smaller footprint. This is not all bad. For example, it means we are less prone to hydroplaning. But on soft surfaces, these same factors make the tire sink in a lot more than we'd originally planned. This can create some problems. With less flexibility in the tire, we're also more likely to see tire damage if we encounter something sharp like landing on certain types of gravel, etc. When we set the tires to recommended pressure, a lot more damping is maintained. Once the airplane is in contact with the runway, it stays in contact with the runway in some cases, you even see the tire flex pretty well as it absorbs springiness from the landing gear while still keeping us in contact with the runway. Big surprise, it's best to follow manufacturer recommendations with tire pressures. Proper tire pressure pays dividends on turf as well. As you can see in this rollout, it's much smoother. Properly inflated tires can deform a little bit. At 25 psi, for example, they will feel solid if you stand on them with one foot but they will still be much more pliable as they absorb sudden impacts and dampen out vibrations. The result is better runway contact, more control, and less sinking into soft surfaces, etc. It's worth mentioning that properly inflated tires lose pressure when the temperatures drop. Considering the temperature of a landing surface is also worth thinking about. So what about my Piper Cub? Well, First, it's harder for me to get cameras into a position where we can observe the sidewalls flex like we can with the Cessna. But we can see similar effects of bounciness with overinflated tires. Here are some landings with tires at 30 psi. Most people recommend about 20 psi, and some references guide us to 16 psi. Here are some landings at 20 psi. Note the improved damping on the wheels. It gets smoother still at 16 psi, but I like running about 20 because about two thirds of my flying is off of concrete. Well, that's my little video on tire pressure. The subject is kind of dull, but it's kind of important too. Like many things in aviation, there are strong opinions and many factors which I did not cover in my video here. Things to discuss would be hydroplaning, puncture protection, rolling valve stems, pinching tubes, and changing temperatures. I'm saving those discussions for a landing performance video I'm putting together. Thank you for watching.